This is John Jackson Miller, and you're listening to the Star Wars Canon Podcast. May the Force be with you. There are stories about what happened. It's true. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 16 of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. The date is January 5th, 2019. We've got 348 days until Star Wars Episode 9, 95 days until Star Wars Celebration. It's going to be a huge year for Star Wars fans, but we'll get into that here in just a few minutes. I hope you guys had a great holiday season. I hope you got to spend it with friends and family. I hope it was very special. Uh, that's always the most important thing is friends and family, man. I hope you guys had a great, great holiday season. Uh, and Happy New Year! Here we are, January 2019. Man, I never thought I'd get this far, to be honest. Uh, but like I said, we've got a lot to talk about this week, and it's not so much in the way of news as of right now, but it's stuff that we're. I'm going to be talking about all the stuff we've got to look forward to in 2019. So uh, before we get into that, I want to let you guys know that we do finally have some Patreon content up for just the patrons. I finally got uh, episodes one. Or, I'm sorry, episode one of both After Show series up on the Patreon last weekend. So uh, we've got episode one of After Show's Rebels and episode one of After Show's Clone Wars. So definitely head over to the Patreon account, uh, and I'll put the description in the, uh, I'm sorry, the link in the description below. Uh, Definitely go check that out. Uh, Yes, that is for patrons only, but I sat down and watched the entire episode, so you guys will have access to that whole episode. I mean, mean, it's the entire episode. So I tried uploading it to YouTube and got hit with a copyright like that, so... Uh, I did find a way around, uh, around it, so definitely go check that out, and uh, I would sure appreciate it if you guys would uh, give some feedback on that. Uh, we've also got Jedi Issues coming for the patrons uh, this weekend. I was going to do it this past weekend, and I was trying to get uh, a very special guest on the show, but sadly he was he was busy. He ended up telling me he was, he was uh, too busy, but he would like to be on the show eventually, and that is the editor of the Star Wars comic, John Cassidy, uh, but I sadly he won't be on this week, but hopefully... Here's to getting him on on a future episode. So definitely go check that out. Uh, and uh, without further ado, you know what? Let's just, that, I think that's everything for housekeeping. Let's just get right into the stuff you guys really care about, the Star Wars news for this year. Man, I'm so excited. Uh, it, it, 2019 is going to be a huge, huge year. We're going to see things that we never thought we'd ever get to see. At least me. I never, ever thought I'd ever be talking about a Star Wars Episode Nine, let alone you know, like, it's just, it, it's crazy, you know, the, the time we live in. So, we've got a lot to talk about, and uh, whether you love it or hate it, this is for the people who love it, obviously, but whether you like it or not, Battlefront 2 is still Star Wars content, you know, so uh, we've got a lot to talk about with just Battlefront, uh, and you guys know how my my opinion on Battlefront at this point, you know, I, I've i defended it pretty vehemently, uh, and you know, I've been a little jaded in the past recently too. You know, some of the laziness that I saw with with the with the game. You know, concerning Grievous's lightsaber not being the right. You know, Anakin's lightsaber. You know, it's being Luke's saber, not Anakin's. You know, the the being able to see Orion in the sky on Tatooine, stuff like that. They just copied and pasted our skies, our our stars. You know, stuff like that. I yeah, I've been a little. I'm getting to the point where I can kind of see where people are coming from, but I still love playing it. I can't help it. I have I haven't played it in a while though. I've been really busy. I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey just swallowed my time, and now I'm working on Horizon Zero Dawn, so uh, I need to get back to Battlefront. But, you know, with these updates that they've talked about that's coming this month, I think I'm going to get back into it here in the next weekend, or week or so. So uh, if you guys are interested, here is the update list for Battlefront 2 for the month of January. January 4th through the 6th will be a triple XP event. Heroes and Villains, January 11th through the 13th. Will be a triple uh, XP event for Troopers, Blast and Strike. That's probably where I'm going to be on. Uh, I play a lot of Blast. January 18th through the 20th will be a triple XP event for Starfighters. January 25th through the 27th will be Battle Point Event Eras, where your era-appropriate heroes will cost 50% less to play on Galactic Assault Maps, and non-era heroes will be completely unavailable. So that's kind of bull. I was kind of hoping that they'd 
uh, both be available and just be cheaper for the air appropriate, but whatever. But the one update on Battlefront that really matters, that if you guys are Battlefront fans, this is the one you really care about. January 23rd, the Darth Tyrannus update. We are finally getting Count Dooku and a Count Dooku appearance. You know, when, when they first said we were going to be getting a Count Dooku appearance, I was trying to figure out what the hell it could be because he wore the same damn thing in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So I was trying to figure out what uh, what his alternative appearance would be, and I, I came to the conclusion it has to be something in Clone Wars. And it is. It's his dark ritual outfit. So I'm hoping to God that they don't do this like Clone Wars model of him in the game. I hope it's still the Christopher Lee with the outfit. So we'll see. I hope, man, I'm praying. I'm fingers crossed that they don't do this Clone Wars skin thing. You know, because I know this is a Star Wars channel, but it, it, for those of you who have played, you know, Spider Man PS4, which I loved, by the way, some of the suits in there were animated suits. And, you know, I was talking to Richard J while I was playing, and he said he didn't like them. And they kind of grew on me a little bit, but I just don't see that working with Battlefront. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I love Star Wars and I don't want to see anything like that. In Star Wars, I don't know, maybe, but... Uh, and then the other appearance we're getting with that update is a clone trooper appearance, the Coruscant Guard. So, uh, I don't think anybody really cares about that one, to be honest. Uh, it's the Count Dooku everybody wants. So, uh, definitely going to be playing some Battlefront here in the next few weekends. And, uh, you know, I, I thought about just start broadcasting once a week. Have, you know, Saturday night, whenever the podcast is going live, you know, or maybe even on Sundays on my day off, sit down and play Battlefront with you guys. You know, so and, and in broadcast that we can just talk some Star Wars. You know what I mean? We'll throw it up on the YouTube channel for everybody to watch if they want to. And uh, we'll just talk some Star Wars. So if you guys are interested in that, shoot me a, a friend request over at uh, on, on my PS4. It's just Doc in a Blue Box. Uh, and uh, make sure to send me a message, though, and tell me that, you know, you saw it on YouTube or whatever. Because I've been getting friend requests for, I guess, spam profiles. And I just I just been deleting it. So I'm hoping I didn't delete anybody who actually wanted to play. So uh, shoot me a message and let me know that it's you. I, it's that easy and we'll play some battlefront i will talk star wars with you guys all damn night i don't care so uh that pretty much does it for battlefront uh you know it, it's it's that's a lot for the one you know i mean for one month that's they've never done triple xp events before so i'm excited about that but it's not just battlefront that we have to look forward to this year guys we've got a lot of novels and a lot of comics tv shows a movie games we got everything coming out this year you know the last few years it's been kind of, it's been comics novels movie that's been about it right you know and if you don't count battlefront content coming out stuff like that so this year we are getting so much star wars goodness it's insane and these aren't in, these are in chronological order in the order they're coming out in this year they're not in you know any order by novels tv shows anything like that so we're just going to start at the top and work our way down. This is everything that has been announced so far. This isn't everything by any means. You know at Celebration we're going to be getting announcements for, you know, more uh, comics, more novels, you know, whatnot. So this is just what we know of so far. So starting on March 5th, we have a novel coming out by E.K. Johnston called Queen's Shadow. I'm very excited about this one. This is a novel that follows Padme Amidala after her years as Queen of Naboo. So it takes place between episodes one and two. Uh, and it's her trying to learn to be a senator after being a queen, you know, and, and, I, and I, don't, I think this is my prediction. I see it being more of everybody else trying to come to terms that she's no longer royalty and treating her like a senator instead of a queen, you know, so she's trying to get out from under that shadow, if you know what I mean. I'm really looking forward to this novel. We really don't have a lot of Padme-centric stuff. You know, she had a, a, a huge part in Thrawn Alliances uh, and obviously a big part in Clone Wars, but that's really about it. We haven't really seen a lot of Padme anywhere to be honest so i am excited about this novel and especially ek johnson writing it she did uh, ahsoka which i absolutely loved the novel ahsoka so uh we have that one to look forward to uh between april 11th and april 15th we are going to be having star wars celebration chicago 2019 i'm very very excited for celebration this year you know the last celebration was kind of a letdown for a lot of people you know um yeah we got the trailer for last jedi and it was the 40th anniversary panel but that was really about the only thing that, that stood out for that celebration. It, you, you know what I mean? Because uh, I, if I remember right, I believe that was also the celebration where they brought Alden Ehrenreich out and was like, here's your new Han Solo. And we all already knew, you know, so uh, that was no shocker. So I feel like that was that was a real letdown, you know, because we didn't get any Obi-Wan announcement, which everybody thought we were going to get. So. I have a feeling they're going to try to make up for it with it this year. Obviously, we're going to be getting a trailer for Episode Nine, 
like, yes, I can't wait. Uh, obviously, we're going to get more comic announcements, more novel announcements. Maybe we'll see a little something from Jedi Fallen Order. Doubt it. Maybe that'll be E3, but you never know. You know, maybe some images from it or something like that. Very, very excited about that. And maybe some film announcements. Fingers crossed. I don't know. Who knows? You know, so uh, Celebration fi- uh, uh, 2019 is going to be April 11th to the 15th. April 16th, the day after Celebration ends. We have got one of my most anticipated novels of 2019 that we know of so far, and that is Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. This is a novel I am so stupidly excited for that I just, I'm, I'm, this is what I want. Like, I, I'm starting to get this weird itch in my neck that I have to scratch because I want this book so bad. Uh, and, and for those of you that don't know, Claudia Gray is the queen of canon, in my opinion. Uh, you know, she wrote Lost Stars, Bloodline, she wrote Leia, Princess of Alderaan. She did the short story. Master and Apprentice and the and the novelette, the set of short stories from a certain point of view, following Obi Wan and Qui uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon daring a new hope, which was really really kind of a cool aspect to see. So I'm really really looking forward to this novel. This novel is going to take place pre Phantom Menace though, so I'm this is going to be the first novel we have before Episode One. We've got a couple of comic runs, you know, we had a few issues in the Star Wars comic that followed Yoda pre Phantom Menace, and we've had the five issue Darth Maul run that was pre Phantom Menace. But this will be the first novel we've had that is pre-Phantom Menace. So I'm very, very excited about that. June 4th, we've got Alphabet Squadron by Alexander Freed coming out. Not a whole lot is known about this uh, novel at, at this point. Uh, Alexander Freed did the Rogue One novelization. He did the, the first Battlefront novel. So uh, I'm, I'm, looking forward, I'm looking forward to this novel. Uh, and I felt like an idiot trying to figure out why it was called Alphabet Squadron until I realized that it's a squadron of different starfighters like an a-wing a b-wing an x-wing you know stuff like that so uh but I, i'm i'm really looking forward to the, that novel as well uh the last novel that we know of at this moment as of this recording is july 23rd that is the third in the thrawn series thrawn treason by timothy zahn i'm so looking forward to this novel i cannot wait the thrawn uh thrawn series so far been phenomenal it's no different than what it was in the old eu obviously timothy zahn is a genius for writing a character like thrawn because if when you read thrawn yes he's a he's a military genius but you got to think about it we all know thrawn's a fictional character zahn is writing this guy zahn is a genius to be able to write some of this stuff so uh, i am so stupidly looking forward to that uh, fall of 2019, we're going to have the launch of the Disney streaming service. Uh, and on that streaming service, we are going to be having Jon Favreau's The Mandalorian making its premiere, as well as Season 7 of Clone Wars. Clone Wars is making its return. I'm so excited for that. Look, I'm looking forward to The Mandalorian. Especially hearing that, you know, uh, IG-88 is going to be in it, possibly Bosk. You know, I mean, all these rumors we've been hearing about The Mandalorian. So excited for it. But Clone Wars Season 7, holy crap. Hold my beer, watch this. I cannot wait for Season 7 of Clone Wars, which we will talk about a little bit more when I get to the mailbag section. Uh, but yeah, man, this is a show, this is a long time coming. And look, I defend a lot of what Disney does, right? I tell a lot of people, calm down, it'll happen. But look, Clone Wars is one of these things where even I was like, man, this needs to happen. Why the hell did, are we not getting an end to Clone Wars? And now we finally are. So I'm really, really excited about I'm I think I'm more excited for Clone Wars than I am Mandalorian. I'm really gonna say it. I'm really excited for Mandalorian, but Clone Wars, it's got a special place in my heart. Especially considering now, you know, for the patrons, I'm sitting down and doing after shows. We're watching Clone Wars together. So uh and, and I know I'm only two episodes into Clone Wars again, rewatching it, but hopefully I'm done with Clone Wars by the time we get to Season 7. So I'm really, really excited for that. Holiday of 2019, we're going to have the video game release of Jedi Fallen Order. I know EA takes a lot of crap for Battlefront 2, and some of it is deserved. I know that. A lot of it's not, I don't think. But I'm really excited to see what they do with Jedi Fallen Order, especially considering that this is going to be a story-driven game, not just multiplayer-driven like Battlefront is. I'm really, really looking forward to Jedi Fallen Order. We don't know. We know next to nothing about this game. So maybe we'll get some information at Celebration, E3 definitely, but this year we're going to finally start seeing some gameplay, some trailers maybe, uh, obviously a trailer at some point of Jedi Fallen Order. So stupidly excited for that. We don't have a release date for that yet, but we do know it's going to be holiday of uh, 2019, obviously this year. And it all leads up to the creme de la creme, the big finale this year, something I never thought I'd see ever 
I never thought I'd be talking about episode nine, Star Wars episode nine. You know, I grew up with episodes. Well, I grew up with Star Wars uh, Empire and Jedi. And then, you know, as I got older, it was, oh, now it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, I never thought I'd be talking about episode nine. You know what I mean? So we have got the conclusion of the Skywalker saga on December 20th, Star Wars episode nine. I, I, I'm so stupidly excited for this as well. I mean, yeah, uh, speculation is running rampant right now. Even I'm, look, I'm one of these people that tries to keep my expectations kind of tempered, but even I'm starting to lose my mind over this. So it's going to be a huge year. Uh, and that's not even counting the Cassian Andor series going into production in October, you know, and other novels that haven't been announced yet, which we'll probably find out about at Celebration. Other comics, you know, that we'll probably find out about at Celebration. You know, stuff like Vader Dark Visions. I'm so... I'm so excited for Vader Dark Visions. It's insane. I, I, I cannot wait. So uh, that is everything as of now that we have to look forward to. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have to update that list come celebration uh, when they start talking about some new thing. You know, we're going to get two or three, maybe four novel announcements uh, and, you know, and, and definitely some more comic issue or some more comic announcements. Because at this point, by the time celebration rolls around, as of now, the only ongoing series they're going to be having going for comics is going to be the Star Wars uh, comic, Dr. Aphra, which I still can't figure out how that one's still going. To be honest, we're on issue like 28 or something like that of Dr. Aphra, and Vader has yet to get past issue 25. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we're going to have Star Wars, Dr. Aphra, and, and whether or not Han Solo Imperial Cadet keeps going, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a five issue run or a limit or, or like a limited run or an ongoing. I'm not sure, but uh, that's really a about it so and then we've got this age of republic age of rebellion and age of resistance series going we're gonna have to get some announcements of what's going to come after that so very very excited to see what comes out of celebration and uh what we have to look forward to this year man i, I can't wait i know i keep saying it man i can't wait i'm so excited uh but really that was all there was in the world of news this week there wasn't a whole lot to really talk about uh so i'm just gonna get through upcoming canon in the next week and then we're gonna take some mailback questions that's what we're gonna do for the rest of the episode uh and i've got several picked out this week but before we get to the mailback questions upcoming canon this week on tuesday dr afra volume four the trade paperback is going to be released uh, that is January 8th, Tuesday, January 8th. Uh, and then on January 9th, which is Wednesday, which is New Comic Book Day, we have Marvel's Star Wars issue number 59 and Marvel's Age of Republic Django Fett. So definitely check out those two comics. Definitely hit your comic store up. You got to check out these Age of Republic comics. They're actually pretty damn good. So definitely go check out those one shots. Uh, and that's all we have. You know, Resistance is on a break right now. It won't be until next week before we can start talking about Resistance again uh, after their holiday break. So let's just get into some mailbag questions. How do you guys get a question on the Star Wars Canon podcast? You simply email it to me at Star Wars Canon Library at gmail.com. I'll go through and pick a few out. Uh, and like I said, this week I've got eight of them picked out. So. The first question this week comes from one of our patrons, Jamie Holbeach. Thank you so much for being a patron, brother. And Jamie says, Hey, Brian, I've just collected volumes one through five of Poe Dameron, but I was a little confused. I saw that volume one had issues one through six, but volume two starts with issue eight. So I looked in volume three and issue seven is in there. Why is that? And do I need to read it in order of issues and skip volume two to read issue seven and then go to volume two? Or is it just read in order of volumes? Sorry if this is a little confusing. No, you're good, brother. Thanks for the question, by the way. Um, and I didn't know what you were talking about at first. Uh, I had to go back and actually pull out my issues because at this point, I'm not completely caught up on, on my, you know, I, I get these trade paperbacks, these these you know, thicker ones because they look better on, on the Canon shelf up there. But I still get all the individual issues and keep them in my long box. So I had to go back, and I haven't got my Poe Dameron TPBs yet, but I, I went back and pulled the issues out and started looking at what you were talking about. And you're right. There is something really weird about that little section of the Poe Dameron comic. Uh, the only thing that I can... Because if you look at the beginning of each comic, on the, like the opening crawl of the comic, it'll say, you know, um, you know, book three, part five, or whatever, you know, so whatever like that. And issue seven just simply says... It's a story arc called The Gathering Storm. And issue seven just simply says, even even in my comics, it doesn't have a, a, a book or a part. It just says The Gathering Storm, opening crawl. And then when you go to issue eight, it says The Gathering Storm, part one, or book three, part one. So yeah, you're right. There is so, a weird numbering thing there. The only thing that I can think of is that issue seven is the very end of that arc. Because I remember reading them, and I need to go back and reread them again, but I remember reading them the first time, and something did seem kind of off 
with that issue. But I just kind of brushed it off. But you're right. That that issuing is – that numbering is kind of weird. Uh, the only thing, like I said, that I can think of is that issue 7 is the very end of that story arc. So uh, I'm going to have to go back and reread those. And, you know, there's been a lot of different typos to the comics and whatnot. You know, like I remember – I think it was one of the Dr. Afra comics. I think it was Dr. Afra. The opening crawl in the TPB – copied the first line of the opening crawl like it got halfway through the first line and then started over you know and, and it was but those happen all the time uh i did think for a second that there was something wrong with the numbering of the comics but it's it's not i just i think issue seven just happens after all that so i think it's just as simple as that no i would just go ahead and read them in the order the tpbs put them in to be completely honest the volumes i would just read them in that order that's probably as close as you're going to get to being chronological uh, to be completely honest. So thanks for the question, Jamie. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if uh, if uh, you need something else explained. I'll see if I can help you out with that, bud. Thanks for the question, Jamie. Question number two this week comes from Carl Garner. And Carl asks, with Clone Wars releasing Season 7 later this year, what are some of your hopes for the show? What would you like to see in this season, and what are some of your predictions? Personally, I'd love to see Padme find out she's pregnant and see Obi-Wan and Anakin leave to go save the Chancellor. Love the podcast. Hope to hear your thoughts. Thank you, brother. I appreciate the email. And yeah, there's a lot of things in episode, I'm uh, not an episode, in season seven of Clone Wars that I really want to see. And, and Padme finding out she's pregnant is one of them. That is something we've got to see in Clone Wars. That's, that, that's essential, really. Uh, I would like to see Obi-Wan and Anakin go run off and save the Chancellor. I think that would lead right into episode three. But I don't want that to be the end of the season. I, I would rather see Season 7 of Clone Wars continue past the beginning of Episode 3. And, you know, and follow Ahsoka and the 501st. Because, you know, Anakin gives Ahsoka the 501st. Dave Filoni's already told us this uh, at, at a Clone Wars uh, celebration panel. He gives Ahsoka the 501st to help free Mandalore, to fight Maul. That's what that is, you know? Because even in Rebels... Maul referred to Ahsoka as Lady Tano. I want to see where that comes from. You know, you know those two are going to come face to face. We're going to see Maul in this season again. I want to see Ahsoka come face to face with him. But I say all of that because I want to see Order 66 happen from the point of view of the clones and a Jedi being trying, you know, being attempted, assassinated, you know, them trying to kill Ahsoka. I want to see it from that point of view. But we know Rex doesn't partake in the, in the genocide, you know, and, and order 66 and some of the other clones later on in rebels, we find out didn't, I would love to see what's going on from their point of view when order 66 happens. And all of a sudden all these clones turn and start trying to shoot at Ahsoka. I want to see this happen. I'm so excited. That's, that's the biggest thing I want to see in season seven of clone wars. Um, definitely want to see Leia or not Leia. Um, Padme find out she's pregnant. Anakin and Obi-Wan, they at some point they're going to get a mission to go off and 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 save the Chancellor. Obviously, whether that's going to be the way I want it to be where it's halfway through the season and then it goes on to Order 66 or if they're going to end the season there, which I hope that's not what they do. They might, but th I think we're definitely going to see that for sure. Uh definitely going to see the return of Maul uh and and I'm 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 like I said earlier, I'm so stupidly excited for season seven of Clone Wars. It's insane, you know. Um, and, and you never know, we might actually see some tie ins to maybe some other characters. I don't know. So, uh, I think somebody asked me one time in season seven if I thought we'd see any Rebels characters kind of pop up and do a cameo. And I said the only one that would make any sense would be Caleb Doom, you know, Kanan. That would be the only one that would really make any sense whatsoever popping up in Clone Wars, because we've kind of had that pseudo cameo by Hera. It hasn't, I don't know if it's been confirmed. I should, I should know that. That's my job. I don't know if it's been confirmed or whether or not that that Twi'lek that uh, Chem Syndulla had, that daughter that he had in Clone Wars, we don't know if that was Hera or not. It almost had to have been, right? So, uh, will we get a cameo of Rebels characters? That'd be kind of cool. It'd be kind of cool to see Caleb Doom and uh, Depa Balaba, his, ba his master. So, uh, I hope that answers your question. What do you guys think? If you guys are watching this on YouTube, comment below. Let me know what would you guys like to see in uh, Clone Wars Season 7. What are your hopes? What are you most excited for for that? Let me know. If you guys are listening on Spotify or iTunes, shoot me an email at StarWarsCanonLibrary at gmail.com. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Thanks for the question, Carl. I do appreciate it. Uh, question number three this week comes from Jonathan Moss. And Jonathan says... 
Uh, why didn't we ever get Lego games for Rogue One, The Last Jedi, and Solo? The game for The Force Awakens was absolutely amazing, and I feel like the films since then would have lent themselves well to being told in that format. What do you think? Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for the question, Jonathan. And that's a really great question because I've often wondered the same thing. Why didn't we get any Lego games after Force Awakens? You know, they're, they've been doing these other games. They've been doing the DC villains. They've been doing Incredibles. They've got this whole other slate of games they've been doing. We never got another Star Wars game. And, and you're right. Lego The Force Awakens was the best Lego game they've ever done, bar none, in my opinion. I, I've played so many of them. It's insane. And I've been playing them since the beginning, since the first Star Wars. Their first Lego game was Star Wars. So I've been playing it since then, and that was by far the absolute best one. I 100 percented that thing in like a week, week and a half, two weeks, something like that. And uh, yeah, no, I, I'm really curious why they never did it, because to be honest, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea that, that you've stumped me. I, I Unless it has something to do with licensing for video games, you know, going to EA. But they were doing Battlefront before the Force Awakens Lego game came out. So it's a great question. I have no idea. Um, but I would have really liked to see a Lego game of Rogue One. And I think Solo would have been a good one. But look, as much as I like The Last Jedi, because I'm one of those people, you can lynch me for it, let me have it. As much as I like Last Jedi... That movie would not have, in my opinion, would not have lent itself very well to a Lego game. I, I don't think, not enough happened in it. You know, not, don't get me wrong. I, I did like Last Jedi, but not enough happened in it that you could make, you know, eight or nine good, solid Lego environment levels out of. There's just not, you know, even with the story, you, you know, I... Crate would have been a vehicle mission, obviously, you know, and then would have went into a, a, a character mission. You know, but it's just, what would what would the levels be on Octu? What would they be on Canto Bight? What would they be, you know, on on the starships being chased? Like, there's there's nothing that those levels could have been. The only level that would have made any sense would have been Ray and Kylo fighting the Praetorian Guards. So I don't think Eight would have really lent itself very well unless it added a bunch of new content to itself, kind of the way Force Awakens did with its DLC. Because, you know, the Force Awakens LEGO game told the story of 3PO getting his red arm better than what the comic did. So there's a lot they could have done with LEGO games with Star Wars. But, yeah, I, I think Rogue One would have been a great one. And I think Solo would have been a good one. I just I don't think Last Jedi lent itself very well to being a LEGO game. But I could be wrong. They might come out tomorrow and announce that they're doing a trilogy of those three games for all I know. So, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really good question because the force awakens was a really good Lego game, but, uh, I'm just going to chalk it up as to they're really busy doing other games at this point or the video game license got, you know, there was an issue with them releasing the game and, and, and whatnot. It's just, I, I, I it's a good, it's a great question. It's, it really is. I think you've kind of stumped me on that one. So I'm sorry. I can't answer it fully, but, that's a really good question. So thanks for sending it in, though. Uh, once in a while, I need somebody to make me think because I don't think a whole lot. Uh, thanks for the question, Jonathan. Question number four this week comes from Randy Owens. The Randy Owens? Like from the music group Alabama? That Randy Owens? Because I love Alabama. That's that's my favorite country group. Ever. But anyway, uh, Randy Owens says, Hey, Brian, love the podcast. I think you've got the workings of something great here. Keep it up. Thank you, brother. I do appreciate that. Uh, he goes on to say, my question is, have you seen the short fan film Star Wars Theory did called Shards of the Past? I thought it was very well done. Now that Lucasfilm has seen our reactions to it, do you think they'll finally, do you think we'll finally get a Vader film? I know we have comics and novels focusing on them, but I'd really like to see a film of Vader tearing Rebels up the whole time, like in Rogue One. What are your thoughts? Thanks for the question, Randy. Uh, and actually, yes, I've seen episode one of Shards of the Past. Richard J. sent it to me. I think he wanted me to do a reaction video to it, and I didn't know that till after I'd watched it. And uh, it was freaking awesome, right? There were a couple things in there that didn't work for me, uh, but it's just nitpick stuff, and because I really can't bitch about it because every I I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have done the the short film nearly as good as that, to be honest. Um, you can definitely tell that they put a lot of love and care into that Vader suit. That thing looked phenomenal, you know. Um, and, and the storyline for it, from what we've seen so far, was pretty cool. Some of the tricks the Emperor was using on 
on uh, Vader. Now, the Emperor looked horrible. I'll say that much. The Emperor looked absolutely horrible. Why is he wearing slip-on penny loafers? That makes no sense. But anyway, but some of the visuals were just phenomenal. You know, like when the camera cuts to the outside of the Star Destroyer and, you know, the lightning battles going on inside and you see the light flashing out the window. That was freaking awesome. But uh, yeah, no, it was an awesome, awesome short film kudos i couldn't have done it i couldn't have done anything near that great so uh, i definitely give them kudos for that and i did enjoy it you know and i kind of want to see where the next episode goes for it i and and you, you thought it was well done i completely agree with you however just because somebody makes a fan film that is that good don't get me wrong it's great that doesn't mean lucasfilm is gonna go we need to capitalize on that and make a vader film We've got Vader films. We have six films about Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader, about that character. We have six movies. I get that everybody wants... It's not that you want a Vader movie. Okay, I'm, I'm... Just hear me out for a second. From the outside looking in, this is what I see. I don't see you guys wanting a movie about Darth Vader. I see you guys wanting a movie with Vader just wrecking shit. That, that, I mean, that, and who doesn't want that? I would want that. But... Y- it's it's one of those things where at some point it would become tiresome. You would get Vader chopping people down fatigue because there's only so much he could do before you go, all right, when's this going to end? You know, it, it's, I wouldn't mind seeing him pop up in another movie somewhere happening between three and four or between four and five or where I really want a movie five and six. But... I, I just, I don't see anything like that working. And no, I don't think Lucasfilm is going to do anything because a fan made an awesome fan film. I don't think that's going to happen at all. Um, but, you, but you're right. We do have a lot of comics and a lot of novels that focus on Vader. We've had two successful Vader runs so far, which are at the top of my comic list, by the way. Numbers one and two are both Vader runs. Still can't figure out how they didn't get past issue 25, but whatever. And now we've got Vader Dark Visions coming. Somewhere down the road, we might get something Darth Vader-centric, but I'm, I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. Because right now, the only films that we know for a fact are coming are, love it or hate it, Ryan Johnson's trilogy and Benioff and Weiss's series. That's the only films that we know of so far. So I don't see anything happening with Vader anytime soon. I mean, We've got the, the VR thing coming out, the Vader Immortal, which I'm really looking forward to. I've, I think I've got Kirsty convinced to let me get a PSVR just so I can get this. Uh, and it's, it's, I, I just don't see us ever getting anything, uh, a, a movie. Now, don't get me wrong. If Lucasfilm comes out and says, Hey, we're doing, if they announce tomorrow, uh, our next standalone film is going to be uh, Vader, a star Wars story. And it's going to be him hunting down Jedi. Yeah. I'm first in line. My ass is in a seat. You, I'm already going to give you my money for it, but I just don't see it happening. And it's not at the top of my list of what I'd want. I think right now at the top of everybody's list, what they want would be Obi-Wan over Vader. Uh, so, but but I don't even think that's going to happen now, but, uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Do you think we'll ever get something Vader centric? It may or may not happen, but thanks for the question, brother. I do appreciate it. Uh, moving on to question number five this week and question number five comes from Shane Duncan and Shane says, cheers, Brian. Cheers, brother. How you done? Uh, love the channel and the content. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, if my math serves me correctly, I'm assuming we're not going to be getting, a Star Wars film in 2020. If we were, we would have heard something by now, right? Uh, thanks for the question, Shane. And yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm right there with you. You're not crazy. As of right now, I it's looking like we're not going to be getting a film in 2020 unless they blindside us with some massive announcement at Celebration that they've already been working on and shooting another Star Wars movie that nobody knew about. That's not happening. So I really, I think 2020, we're not getting a movie. I think we were supposed to. I think we were supposed to be getting that Obi-Wan movie. And then because of the way Solo was received, I think they canned Obi-Wan. I don't, I, I really don't see Obi-Wan happening. And, and you're, and you're right. I don't see a movie happening in 2020 at all. 2021 will probably be the earliest we get another Star Wars movie after episode nine. Um, Cause the next one we've got coming out is going to be what a Benioff and Weiss film, I believe. Uh, and they're going to be starting working on their films after they're done with Game of Thrones. So, yeah, as of right now, I don't think we're going to be getting a movie in the year 2020, which means they need to be making up with it with some other content, which they may be making up with, you know, for that with The Mandalorian or, you know, the Casting Andor series, you know, stuff like that. We're going to have a lot of other stuff to kind of fill in the gap. It's not going to be like last year where it was, 
you know, Solo came out in May, and then the rest of the year, it was just, you know, here's some comics. Oh, a couple novels. We're going to stop the novels in September, though, and uh, you guys just kind of kind of coast along with nothing for the holiday season. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I think 2020 is going to be a year where we don't get any Star Wars movies, but we're going to have plenty of stuff to fill in the gap. I'm still very excited for 2020. Let's just get through 2019 first, because 20, 2019 might kill me with the amount of Star Wars stuff coming out. It might be the death of me. So let's focus on 2019. Then we'll get to 2020. But no, you're right. As of now, it doesn't look like we're going to be getting a film in 2020. Unless I'm missing something I don't know about. If you guys know something, I don't. Because keep in mind, I'm just a fan. I know what you guys know. I just decide to put my opinion out there about everything. So uh, if you guys know something, I don't. I'm just a fan. If you guys know something, I don't. Let me know because... I would really like to know if there's been an announcement, which I don't think there has been. So, uh, yeah, we're in, I, as of now, I'm going to go ahead and call it no film in 2020. Unless, like I said, unless by some weird chance at Celebration, they come out and say, guys, for the last eight months, we've been working on this Star Wars movie. And, and they're like, we have a teaser trailer to show you for 2020. No, there's no effing way. There, there, it's, that's not going to happen. Unless... Unless they come out and say, you know, something along the lines of December of 2020, expect Obi-Wan. We've already got the script written. We're going into production in a week, you know, like, or if they, if they're going into production in, you know, August or something, but it's, it's, we would have heard something about that by now that would have leaked at some point that you don't keep a secret like that, that long. You know what I mean? Like. Even, I mean, look at Avengers, right? They said, oh, we're not going to give you the title of Avengers. Sure, everybody ran with Avengers Annihilation as the title, but somebody guessed Endgame. That got out. You know what I mean? So, uh, at some point, it's going to leak. You know, and maybe these leaks we've heard about Obi-Wan are those leaks. You know, who knows? But, uh, no, I don't I don't see us getting a movie in 2020. And I didn't even think about that until I read your email. I was like, oh, crap, I think he's right. I don't think we are getting a movie in 2020. And I... And, I, I really don't think we are. So uh, it's going to suck if we don't because this Christmas sucked not getting a new Star Wars movie. It really did feel like an empty void. I really do feel like they should have push, pushed Solo back to, to December. But it is what it is. We got it in the order we got it in. Let's just look forward, move on, because like I said, we've got a lot to look forward to. So thanks for the question, uh, Shane. I do appreciate it. Question number six this week comes from Corey Montgomery. And Corey says, I know everyone is clamoring for a remake of KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic, uh, but what if Lucasfilm decided to go in a different, uh, go a different route and rework that story into a comic or a novel? Uh, I know KOTOR isn't canon as of now, but do you think fans would respond well to a novelization of Revan's story? Thanks for keeping track of all of this for us. Thanks for the question, Corey. Uh, and yeah, no, as of right now, KOTOR is not canon, but it's one of the best Star Wars games I've ever played. Uh, you know, I played back through it again recently. Absolutely loved it. Here's the thing, though, with um, a comic, it would almost have to be an ongoing series for like two years to tell the whole story. Otherwise, it'd be a really abridged version of it, and I don't think it would be a good payoff. I don't think it would do justice to the story. So I'm gonna I'm gonna nix comic for right now. A novel is interesting, though. Because you could do a a novelization of Knights of the Old Republic in a way you could really delve into some character development there. And you could really flesh out Revan. You could really flesh out Malak, uh, Bastila, Carthonassi. I mean, these these characters, you know, not so much focus on some of the the other characters that were just like, I don't want to have Johanni on my team. Why do I need Cat Lady? Like, say she's there, but you don't have to have her. Add HK-47 in there. You know, it's the... But you run into a problem by doing a story that beloved as a novel because look at the world we live in right now, right? We live in a world where in this new canon for Star Wars fans, right? You can't put anything galaxy shattering in a novel and expect fans to be happy about that because then they go, well, what do you mean? I have to go read a book to be able to get that story. You're going to have a sect of fans, a certain section of fans that if you do a Knights of the Old Republic novel instead of another game, you're going to piss some people off. There are going to be some people who are pissed because they don't get to play that experience again. Because one of the great things about Knights of the Old Republic is you make your decisions, and at the end of the game, there's two endings you can go either way. 
You know, there's three different ways you can play that game. You can either go full light side, go full dark side, or what I like to do, just make the decisions as you go along and see where you would end up at the end of the spectrum, right? Because one of the things in Nazi Old Republic that to this day, I've played that game so many times, and one of the things I cannot figure out to this day is how the hell to get that little girl that stows away on the Ebon Hawk to speak Mandalorian. I can't, I, I, to, to speak Mandalorian to her. I never can figure that out. I always lose my shit and I kick her the, the hell off my ship. I never can figure it out. I don't know why. I don't know if, if I just can't comprehend that I'm picking the same options over and over again and I'm not picking it up. I just, I don't know. But it's one of those things where you have, like, you could play through and just make your decisions and I get fed up with it and I kick her out and it affects where I go in the end. You know what I mean? Which it would in real life. You would be taking that element out of it by doing a novel a novelization of it unless you write the novel right which i mean you'd have to it'd almost be like a choose your own adventure kind of thing which at that point you might as well just make the game canon you know what i mean so it's it, i i don't see them ever doing a novelization of it and if they did i think i think you'd have some people ranting and raving being pissed off that well we just play the old game again to get the same story again you know but the only thing making a novelization of it would do would be to bring it into canon. So why not just make the game canon? It would just be easier instead of reworking it into a novel than to just come out and say, okay, Nazi Old Republic is canon as is, or come out with a remake of the game. You know what I mean? Like, to, like, uh, like, like you said, people are clamoring for a remake. I honestly think that would be the best route to go with that particular story. So, uh, but, it, but it's an interesting question. I never thought about KOTOR as a novel. I, don't, I just I don't know if it would work. I could be wrong. They could come out tomorrow and say, hey, we're doing a nice Old Republic novel, and it could be one of the best Star Wars novels there. I don't know. So, um, But just based off of what I, I know at this point and my experience with KOTOR, I think it needs to stay as a game. But I, if they came out with a novel, I'd read it. Yeah, sure, why not? But I just, I don't think fans would respond to it very well. You know what I mean? So, uh, but thanks for the question. That's an, that's an excellent question. And it's it's one that got me thinking again. Like I said, I don't think very often. So you guys got to keep me on my toes. So thank you for the question, Corey. I do appreciate it. Uh, question number seven this week comes from Billy Murphy. Uh, and Billy says, hello, Brian. Love the channel and podcast. Uh, cheering for you to hit that thousand subscriber mark. Thank you so much, Billy. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're coming up on a thousand, and it's like we're at like nine hundred and forty some odd. That's like nine hundred and fifty more than I ever thought I'd get. So, uh, yeah, we're we're coming up on it. Uh, my question for you is about the Thrawn comic. I know it's just a shortened retelling of the first Thrawn novel. Does that not seem like a cash grab by Lucasfilm? Like they realized that they had a great story and decided to just repackage it and resell it to us again. Seems shady to me, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Thanks for the question, Billy. And, you know, a lot of people could look at it that way, that it's just a, a cash grab on a great story. Let's just turn around and repackage it and make double the money off of it again, right? So, you're right. The Thrawn comic, it was a six-issue run. It was a comic adaptation of the novel Thrawn, the first Thrawn novel that Timothy Zahn did in canon, not the old heir to the empire stuff, but it was the actual novel Thrawn. Uh, and Thrawn was one of, one of the highest rated star Wars novels so far. It's up there with lost stars. It's up there with bloodlines. You know, it's one of the, the general favorites. Uh, and the fact that Timothy Zahn wrote it, it's just, it helps add another level to it that it's just, it still has that kind of old, you know, old EU feel to it. But they did this six-issue comic adaptation of it, which I thought was really cool because I I read the novel, I read the comic. The comic didn't add anything to the story, but it kind of gave a visual to what was going on. You know what I mean? Kind of helped you picture what was going on a little bit better. Yeah, it was very abridged. It's it's hard to squeeze an entire novel into six issues of a comic book. But what I liked about it and, and what I appreciated about it, there's nothing special about the Thrawn comic. There really isn't. There, if you've read the novel, you don't need the comic, okay? But... What was, what was really interesting and what I thought was kind of cool about the Thrawn comic was that, you know, you've got people, like I just said a few minutes ago, you've got people who uh, don't want to have to sit down and go through the tediousness, the monotony of reading a novel to get a story, right? Uh, you know, there's, there's several people who don't have time to sit down and read all this, to read all these novels that are coming out. Why not do, you know, little six issue adaptations of the novels you can bust through a six issue adaptation in an hour you know what i mean and and you 
get the gist of the story. Sure, you don't get everything, but you get the meat and potatoes of the story, the actual skeleton of it, what is actually, you know what I mean? Like the, the actual basics of it. You don't get all the extra little details and stuff, but you but you don't really need a whole lot of it You because know, you're visualizing, you're seeing the pictures, you're seeing it happen instead of it being described to you. I don't see a problem with it. And it's something that I think needs to be done more often. I, I, I'm going to say that. I think Marvel needs and Lucasfilm need to go back and, and reevaluate that idea because it's been the it's been the only one they've done it with so far they haven't done another one since uh i think they really do need to go back and start doing six issue runs of the novels and and you know and like you said some people may see it as a cash grab uh you know telling the same story again and again and again in different formats right but that's no different than releasing a novelization of a film that just came out you know that's telling the same story twice and it, I don't see a problem with that, you know, and, and especially, you know, if it adds to the film, you can fit more into a novel than you can into a film. You can fit more into a novel than you can a comic book, but with a comic book, you can actually visualize what's going on. And I think that would be a really great idea to be honest, you know, cause especially look at it this way too. You know, Lucasfilm just started this YouTube channel, star Wars kids, right? And they got little like adaptation and, and animated shorts of the old films, right? The classic films. That's something you show your kids, and then as they get older, you go, hey, you know there's films of those same characters, actual movies, and they go, oh, really? And then you show them Star Wars, Empire, Jedi, you know, for the first time. But that cartoon is kind of the insertion point, you know, an entry point for them to become Star Wars fans, to get into the universe. These comics for the novels could be the same thing, you know? If you have kids that, you know, their reading level isn't, like, quite there yet, you know, if they're, like, a first or second grade reading level... But they love Star Wars, give them the comic books to read, you know, and they'll get the story. And then when they get older, they can be like, oh, I want to read that book now. You know what I mean? Like, so, and maybe they won't. That's, that's a possibility too, but it could happen. So I think it's something that they definitely need to go back and focus on more. I think it's, I think it's a great idea. And to be honest, I think that's a particular golden egg that they don't realize they have. I think that's a hidden gem that I, maybe they do realize it. I don't know, but I think that's something they definitely need to go back and, and look at. But uh, thanks for the question, though. That's my thoughts on that. Uh, like I said, it wasn't anything special as far as the comic goes. It was seriously just a beat-for-beat beat retelling. But for people who don't have time to sit down and read a whole book, I think that would be a great alternative to still get the story. You know what I mean? So, uh, But thanks for the question, Billy. I do appreciate it. And the last question this week comes from Seth Hale. And Seth says... When are we going to finally get some novels and comics that takes place between episodes 6 and 7? There's 30 years there that are just blank, and it's currently the largest unoccupied gap in canon so far. Why aren't we getting anything during that period? Thanks, and keep up the great work, Brian. I appreciate the question. Uh, no, it, it, you're right. That is right now the biggest uh, gap in canon. And, and I answer this question actually quite often. Uh, but the biggest reason right now that I believe, right, we don't have anything concrete about this, but first off, there's more content in that time period than you think. Uh, you've got the entire aftermath trilogy. You've got the shattered empire comic. Uh, you've got, hang on a second. You've got last shot legends, Luke Skywalker, bloodline, phasma, uh, some short stories for aliens, you know, stuff like that. But there's, there's, there's several stories there. There's quite a bit, you know, uh, the Battlefront campaign, the Battlefront 2 campaign takes place during that time period. Now, granted, everything I just read is either closer to the sequel trilogy or closer to the classic trilogy, and you still got this big gap in between, right? Granted, I'll give you that. But I think there's a reason behind it. I think once Episode 9 comes out, because look, uh, like this time last year, Timothy Zahn came out and said he was writing two more Thrawn novels. And since then, one of them has been announced, Thrawn Treason, that's coming out, you know, this this year. So, which means there's still another Thrawn novel that hasn't been announced yet. And I, I guarantee you, I've always had the belief that Thrawn had a lot to do with the formation of the First Order, had a lot to do with the politics of the galaxy between Episodes 6 and 7. And with the way Rebels Season 4 ended, we all know how that ended the next novel is going to have to be the story of what happened between him and Ezra, right? So once that, once episode nine comes out, I think we're going to be getting a lot more content because you know, next year we're getting another Thrawn novel. That's already, that's happening. And it's going to be that story. I think once episode nine comes out, 
And we see what happens with Episode 9, whether the First Order reigns supreme afterwards or it's completely obliterated, however Episode 9 ends. I think they're going to go back and tell the story of how the First Order was formed, exactly how it was formed. We're going to get the story of, you know, Luke's Jedi Temple, what happened with Ben Solo, you know, him turning into Kylo Ren. We're, we're going to get all of that, you know, Snoke popping. We might even get a Snoke novel for all you know. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things, you just got to be patient. Let's get through this year. Enjoy what they're giving us. And then I, I seriously think this time next year, we're going to be having a very different conversation about the novels that are coming out and about this topic. Because um, you're right, that is the biggest gap right now. Uh, one of the gaps I would rather see some content in, though, is between five and six. Like I said earlier, I, you're in that like Shadows of the Empire era, quote unquote, where that's no longer canon. But I, I, I want some more stories in that time period. Uh, but I, wait till episode nine comes out. Let's see how that goes. Uh, you know, we might get some hell, you never know. Uh, this year's, you know, we're getting another episode film, an episodic film celebration. They might announce a slew of novels that are journey to whatever episode nine's title is, you know, uh, journey to episode nine, like they did for journey to force awakens journey to last Jedi. We're going to be getting some stuff that are going to start dropping hints and clues in episode nine, and maybe even some stuff that's going to be galaxy building and universe building. On the far, on the on the opposite side, the far end of the spectrum from episode nine. So, how it all began, everything like that. So, I'm really, really excited. The biggest thing I want in that time period, though, is I want the novelization. I want a novel of what happened the night Luke went to confront Ben. I want that in a novel because you could and and I'm gonna say it. I want Claudia Gray to write it. I I, I do. I want Claudia Gray to write that. Depending. Look, depending how Master and Apprentice turns out with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, if she can nail that, well, she's nailed everything so far, but if she can nail that dynamic between that those two characters, I want to see what she can do with Luke and Ben. I want to see it. I want to see uh, what she can do with Luke Skywalker and Ben Solo. So uh, just give it a little bit of time. We've got plenty to keep our minds occupied. Next year we'll be here before you know it. Uh, it'll be here. I mean, we'll be talking about stuff between episodes six and seven before you know it. So, uh I hope that answers your question. What do you guys think? When do you think we'll be getting some content between six and seven? I know we've got a little bit now, but I know it's nowhere near what people are wanting. And there's still like 20 some odd years not accounted for there. So uh, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Let me know. I'd love to have the conversation with you guys and uh, to see what you guys think about that. So uh, I think that's going to do it for this episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, if you guys are listening on Spotify or iTunes, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell i'd sure appreciate it i'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers here before long oh man fingers crossed hopefully it hits here very very soon so make sure to check out the facebook page it is facebook.com slash star wars canon podcast and make sure to head over to the patreon page to check out after shows and jedi issues a couple dollars a month you guys will have access to the entire series of Clone Wars and Rebels, the whole episodes. I'm going to sit there and watch them with you guys. So definitely go check that out. And make sure to uh, check out the podcast at StarWarsCanonPodcast.com. So uh, without further ado, guys, I do believe that's going to do it for this week. Like I said, Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you guys have a great one. And until next week, this is Brian signing off. And may the Force be with you. Mm-hmm.